everything. They have given us in us you know, to remember pen kriya pain, admit that is in ICU and antibiotics, and for nasogastric intubation, nasal oxygen, nutrition support. One thing is important that whenever you are going for nutritional support, TPN should be avoided if patient is able to accept or tolerate orally. Because in every disease, you name it, the patient's death is because of the GI tract. Because mucosal integrity is the key role in preventing sepsis in any disease. When you are giving TPN, the mucosal integrity will be disturbed and local IgA antibody will not be produced. There will be atrophy of the mucosa and what will happen? Mucosal barrier is lost. So there will be transmigration of the enterobacteriaceae group from the intestine or bowel to anywhere wherever there is a lesion. Or disease and finally systemic inflammatory response sepsis mods who is causing bacteria is causing from where they are coming with from their gut why because gut is now at the rest so no activity at the mucosa there is no barrier bacteria translocates millions and trillions of bacteria are there even in colonic bacteria they start ascending in the small intestine from large so don't try to play the walk. One, three, four, five days maximum TPN should be given, not beyond that. Okay. Calcium gluconate, yes, if the calcium is less than eight or seven. IV fluids, we have already plasma, okay. Radio R for radiology, rehydration, redidine, resuscitation. E for endotracheal intubation, if ARDS is there, electrolyte management, yes, always there is electrolyte imbalance, ERCP I said only when persistent cholangitis with polydocolithiasis, otherwise it should not be. A for antacids, S for suction in case of aspiration, I said aspiration pneumonitis may be there, steroids in case of ARDS and supportive organ failure like inotropes, hemofiltration, ventilator, dialysis if the creatine and urea is raising like anything. So you see, all are supportive, nothing like you are hitting the pancreas, no. You are just treating the effects of the pancreatic enzymes or inflammatory mediators. You are not directly hitting the pancreas. So it is the supportive treatment only which you are giving to the patient. So it is a self-limiting or leave it to the God. You don't know how it will behave. Clinical vitals, urine output, the moment urine output is falling, hematocrit is increasing, oxygen, SpO2 is falling, grave prognostic sign. Go oh, and patient if it is going in hypotension. So baseline investigation, serial arterial blood gas, serial blood sugar, serum calcium, all this you have to follow along with clinical monitoring. Okay. So early aggressive IV hydration is most important in severe pancreatitis. This thing you have to remember. Early, just like burn patient. Burn patient may care early aggressive hydration. You don't want anaerobic metabolism. The moment the body cells will go into the anaerobic phase, it is very difficult to reverse. Because they will become resistant to your treatment. Every cell becomes resistant, even myocardial area will become resistant to inotropes, so how you will raise the blood pressure. So before that period occurs, go for early aggressive IV fluids. It can be because of the vomiting, reduced oral intake, heart space loss, more than 4 liter. Okay? Then increase respiratory loss, diaphoresis, all that. So it is because of the microangiopathic effect, that is increase in the permeability, edema, sequestration of fluid, all this, along with the decrease Kya hoga? Pancreatic blood flow is also decreased if there is decreased blood pressure. The renal blood flow is also decreased. So finally leading to cellular death necrosis. And the more 
pancreatic cell where the more enzymes are released, more <coughs> inflammatory mediators, cascade will go on. Corn cup kedna chordo, ringer lactate is preferred. Okay, most beneficial during first 24 hours, just like burns. Aggressive means 250 to 500 ml per hour of any isotonic crystallites. Okay, per hour, 500 ml per hour you have to calculate. In patient of the severe volume depletion, you go for the bolus infusion, fast bolus infusion, just like a shock patient or a burn patient. So, if you are able to redistribute the fluid in early phase of the attack, you are preventing this cell function in every organ. So, it should be reassessed at the interval of 6 to 8 hours of admission. So, first 24 hours, by 8 hours you have to assess. How? By the help of the urine output, by the help of pulse, blood pressure and ABG. Okay? Okay. So, hematocrine, blood urea, nitrogen is widely recommended as a surrogate marker for successful hydration. So, urine output, ABG. Hematocrine, basically it is the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. You can base the blood. Okay. In elderly and cardiac or renal comorbidities, you have to restrict your fluid therapy because they are already compromised. Okay. Then you can use CBP. Antibiotics, no use. Routine use is not recommended. In last 10 years, they said prophylactically we should use to prevent infection, but it will cause fungal infection, which is more dead, serious than the bacterial infection, infectitis. Try to avoid using that. It will give rise to the cocci infection also. What are the common bacteria which are responsible for pancreatitis? In pancreas infection, pancreatitis, E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, and Enterobacter, rest of the Enterobacter. Okay. Anaerobes may may not be there, but E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas mostly resistant. And what are the drugs? Carbipenems, that is imipenem, Cephalosporin, third generation, Piperacillin, Tazobacter, Metaprodazole. Quinolones. The best penetrating is of the garlicanum. Okay. And metrozil is controversial whether you to give or not because it itself causes pancreatitis. In some book it is there, in some book it is not there, but we have no choice. So if there is so necrosis can be sterile or infective. If it is sterile and there is no clinical symptoms of Toxicity, wait and watch, just support. If there are fever and if you are thinking on CT that there is non-enhancement is also there along with the air bubble, then start antibiotic. If after antibiotic patient is not improving, then what you will do? Necrosis is there which is in, involving all of the pancreas and patient is deteriorating. You have given already the antibiotic coverage but patient is not responding well. That means the damage is so big, the abscess pus is already collected. You said necrosis is for first two, first week or second week. But if it is beyond that, it will become on third onward, third week onward, it will become abscess. Most of the abscess will not respond to antibiotics alone. You have to remove that collection either through endoscopic or CT guided or USG guided or open. Okay, open surgical deprivement. Any sort of drainage or deprivement is needed along with antibiotics. If it is infected and severe form of necrosis or abscess formation. Okay. Okay. Then other infections are cholangitis, catheter induced, bacteremia, UTI, pneumonia. This, these things can happen with the pancreatic patient who is on ventilator or in ICU with nilorly. Okay. So, all the preventive measures they are written to prevent development of sterile to infected necrosis. This is We have already discussed all this. 
blood culture you can take but you can have better sensitivity if you take the UZ guided or CT guided aspiration of the fluid from the vicinity of the pancreas where abscess is forming. Okay. See for example, imipenum, quinolones, metronazole, we have treated the deprasilin is also there along with jazomet. Okay. Probiotics, no role. 